Hello everyone! Today I'm going to make it rain in Unreal using the Niagara Particle Engine. I'm going to move through this a little bit faster than usual, so if you want a more gentle introduction to Niagara, check out the Fireflies video that I made earlier. Otherwise, let's get started. The point behind today is to create a rain system that has streaks of raindrops simulating the motion blur as rain rushes past the camera, as well as uh, little splashes when the rain hits the ground. Let's jump in and get started. So right now I have a particle system that I was using to test this, which I'm going to delete and create a folder for my rain system uh, and create a Niagara particle system inside this. Uh, there are a couple of different ways of creating a Niagara system. We could create an emitter and then attach that to a system, but instead I'm just going to create a pure system and base it off of a hanging particulates uh, template. Hanging particulates is a nice starting point for this because it creates particles in a sort of general location and we can simply add some gravity to those and get decent rain to start with. Double click on hanging particulates, which will add that to our system. And now we can call this rain system. Excellent. Now that we have a system, let's just drag it into the world to give us some context and see what that looks like for now. Hanging particulates creates all these little floating dust particles, which is a good place to start, but they're just hanging there. I want them to fall as if they're affected by gravity because these are raindrops. So what I'm going to do first is in the particles update, add a gravity node. As soon as you add the gravity, there's some errors thrown and all that you need to do is move gravity force above solve forces and velocity. Basically any force or velocity change that's added to your particle update needs to go before the solver. The solver needs to come after all of those calculations. Great, so right now it looks as though the particles have disappeared, but they haven't. They are just falling now. Uh, so to make that a little bit more easy to see, I'm going to move to the initialized particle and change the size to something a bit bigger. And now we can see that they are falling down. Hooray! Now we have a bit of a design choice here. Do we want our rain system to start at the origin of the particle system, meaning that we would have to move the particle system itself up to where the rain starts? Or do we want the rain to come from high above where the particle system exists? If we wanted the latter, we would need to go to the box location and move that uh, location up, say, uh, 10 meters. And now our rain is coming from 10 meters above where the particle system origin is. That's not a super important detail right now, but it's something to keep in mind. I think I'm going to do it this way, uh, that the rain is created 10 meters above where the particle system originates. Right now, the gravity force is matching about the Earth's gravity, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. But the rain is falling quite slowly for me. I want, uh, I want the rain to be falling relatively fast as if it's traveled a long way. Uh, so instead of changing the gravity force, what I'm going to do is add in the particle spawn um, a velocity. So the particles are going to start with an inherent velocity already. So add velocity and under add velocity, give it some negative z value, perhaps negative 500, and the particles come in already traveling relatively quickly. Maybe I'll move that up to 2000, and these raindrops are practically zipping down. Great, that's it for now for the settings of the hanging particles, which actually I'm going to rename to rain drops. So I've renamed this first emitter to be raindrops because these are simulating the drops of rain falling from the sky. I might come in and tweak these values later, but for now, let's move on to adding some trails to these particles. The first thing that we're going to need to do is add a new emitter to handle the trails because the trails are going to be part of a different emission stack. Let's go ahead and right click in the graph, add emitter. To show you how to make this from scratch, I'm going to start with an empty emitter, which contains nothing except for a couple of initializations. Before I even begin, let's rename this to rain trails. And now go through and modify some of these initial settings. Uh, emitter state is fine for now. Particle spawn, instead of initializing a particle, what I want to do is initialize a ribbon. 
And that's because we're not going to be using particle sprites, we're going to be using a ribbon, which is a different type of particle renderer. So I've in added an initialized ribbon, and I can delete the initialized particle. But then, confusingly, I do still need the particle state, because the particle state is going to handle each tick's update for the particle. After that, under render, there is currently a sprite renderer, but like I mentioned, we're not going to be using sprites, we're going to be using ribbons. So add a ribbon renderer and remove the sprite renderer. Now that you've done that, you're all set with the ribbon trails. But nothing's happening because the ribbons aren't currently connected to the drops. We need to somehow send the location information from the drops to the ribbons so that the ribbons can follow each drop. The way that we do that is every frame, or every tick rather, uh, generate a location event for each particle. So under particle update, a little plus arrow, uh, generate location event. One thing that I will mention right now is that you can generate the location event both in particle update as well as in this thing called event handler. So if we were to create an event handler and type generate location event, there is an option to generate location events under the event handlers, but that is not what we want right now. So do make sure, let me just delete that, do make sure that you're adding your generate location event under particle update. Um, and this is going to, every tick, uh, create an event that this particle will be able to send out to the system in general. As soon as we've done that though, we do see that there is a red error in the particle update function. And if we click on this error and look at the Niagara log, which is currently blocked by my silly face, um, essentially this is saying that you need, uh, each particle needs its own persistent ID. And we can enable that in the emitter properties under requires persistent IDs. Once we've done that, those red errors go away and we have a uh, generate location event node in our particle update tree. There is an option for us to change the send rate. Currently the default is 60. That's good for me, that's about the frame rate that my program's gonna be running. But if you only need it to generate a few events per second, then perhaps you might want to reduce that. For now, that's good for me though. Um, so I have a location event, but I need to now handle that event. I need to tell the system what to do with each location event. And we do that using the event handler. We're going to click the little green plus next to event handler, and we have added a new event handler. And all this does is takes that location event and does something with it. In this case, it sends it to the system. Right now though, the event handler doesn't know what it's handling. So we do need to connect it to that location event. And we do that under the source option of the event handler properties. So source, location event. By choosing the raindrops location event, we are linking up uh, this event handler to the events that are generated by the location. All right, so uh, location event. And then execution mode, in this case, we want to choose the spawned particles. This is an option to choose whether the uh, event runs for every single particle in the system or only for particles that are related to this event. So in this case, because we only need to update the particles that have been spawned based on this event, uh, we're gonna choose spawned particles. In terms of max events per frame, this is a way to limit uh, if you want to reduce the number of events that are sent out per frame. Uh, max events per frame is that. Zero is the default, which means uncapped, so we can generate as many events per frame as we want. And lastly, spawn number. So this is the amount of new particles that are spawned when this event fires. In this case, we definitely want to keep this number at zero, because if we generate a new particle every time an event is fired, which in this case is 60 times per second, we're going to overload the system very quickly. So for the particle emitter that is sending out the events, definitely keep the spawn number at zero. Great, we are now sending out from this emitter to the particle system in general, events every single tick, basically updating the system where these particles are. Now what we need to do is set up the trails so that the trails receive those events. The way we receive events is also through an event handler. So let's click the little plus sign next to event handler. Now we have an empty event handler and we need to connect it to the specific events from this particle emitter. Just like the first emitter, the one that's sending is generating location events, the second emitter needs to receive those location events. So now we will press the green plus box under the event handler and search for receive location events. So the event handler is going to listen for the events and then the receive location event is going to figure out what to do with that event. 
just like we had to link the first event handler to the actual source, we're going to link the uh, receiving event handler under source uh, of the event handler properties and choose the location event of the raindrops. And just like before, we're going to change the execution mode from every particle to spawned particles. And the difference here is that instead of leaving our spawn number at zero, this time we do want to spawn new particles. We want one particle trail for each particle. So we're going to change the spawn number to one. Once we've done that, hey, look at that. We have strange lines coming out of our particles. And the reason that our lines look all gray and muted right now is that if we go to the ribbon renderer, the material is not set. So when we created that ribbon renderer earlier, we didn't actually set a material. My bad. Let's go ahead and type ribbon, which will bring up a default ribbon material. If you don't see the default ribbon material, go to view options and ensure that show engine content is checked. Without that, you won't be able to choose the default ribbon material. With the default ribbon material, there we go. We have some nice, beautiful white lines coming out of our particles. If you get to this stage and you're still not seeing any particle trails, go to the emitter properties and see if requires persistent IDs on the receiving end also does anything for you. In this case, I didn't need to, it was already working, but that might be the case for you. Okay, that's how we link the rain drops to the rain trails. So let's compile that and see what it looks like in the world. It's looking okay, but there's still a long way to go. First of all, the rain is in quite a distinct column. So I do want to expand that out so that the rain covers a larger area. And secondly, the lines themselves are a little bit too bright and uh, opaque for me. So I do want to go in and reduce the opacity uh, and perhaps bring down the color as well. And lastly, the raindrops are falling a little bit slowly. So I think I might tweak the speed of those raindrops as well. So let's first tackle the so for the area of the rain. One possibility to increase the size of our particle system is to select the particle system in the world itself and scale it up. Uh, that way you increase the area of the emitter, but not the particles themselves. So the particles are going to remain the same size, but the emitter area will increase. I don't really recommend doing that because then the size of your emitter under the um, particle spawn, all these particle spawn options, like the box location and the sphere location, those sizes aren't going to match what's in the actual world. So I do recommend keeping the scale of your particle system at one and using the particle system settings here under box location, for example, to set the specific size in, in world units. Uh, so right now, the column of rain is a box that is four meters by four meters. So I'm going to change that to be something closer to perhaps 30 meters. So 3000 units along X and 3000 units along Y. Z doesn't matter so much because they're being generated high up in the air. So the difference in Z doesn't really matter too much to me. Let's compile that and head back to our world. And that's looking a little bit better. All right, next up, the particles are falling quite slowly for me. Uh, they're not really uh, reminiscent of rain for me, rather some sort of slow, very lethargic rain, perhaps. So let's go to the add velocity and just increase that velocity by a factor of maybe three. And now these droplets are really zipping down quite nicely. They are sort of slowing down as if they're, uh, there's some friction to them. And I think that's because of the drag and the curl noise force from the hanging particulates template that we used. So I'm just going to delete those two and that gets rid of the uh, strange drag effects that were happening. Excellent. That looks quite a bit better. So lastly, let's go into the ribbon material under initialize ribbon, or not even ribbon material, they're, they're just the ribbon color, and change that color down a little bit to get something that's a bit more transparent. So I've reduced the alpha and also brought down the color value of that a little bit. Maybe that's too much. It'll sort of depend on the lighting conditions of your world, obviously. Great, that's fine for now. One last thing that I might want to do in terms of the trails is under the particle update, there is an option to, uh, if you type ribbon, scale ribbon width. And right now that's just a float, but if we click the little drop down arrow and type curve and get a float from curve, 
then um, it's not super noticeable, but this adds a little bit of a taper to the edge of the curve. And if we right click those handles and choose something like auto, then we have a bit of easing to our curve and we just have a little bit nicer of a, of a taper to the edge of the line, uh, of the particle trails. Save that, compile that, and we have relatively decent rain in our world. Obviously right now it's more of a light drizzle, uh, so to increase that to more of a torrential downpour, let's increase the spawn rate by a factor of 10, and now we have much more heavy rain. Now that we're done with the sort of aesthetic setup of our rain, one thing that I will note is, uh, let's have a look, let's pay attention for a moment to the particle counts, which is in the top left hand corner of the preview window. Even though the emitter particles, the droplets, are at about 200, 300, the, the trails themselves are getting into the thousands, if not the ten thousands by the end. So it's an estimating a maximum amount of 15,000 at a time. And that's just for a spawn rate of about 50. So this is a light rain at the moment. If we were to increase this to something like 500, we've now got almost 40,000 trail particles on screen at a time. Yeah, so this is stabilizing out at about eight, 80,000 particles, um, even though I've only got a couple of thousand uh, raindrops on screen at once. And it seems to me as though the ribbon renderer works by sort of saving the locations of previous particles, which means that for every particle, the ribbon is saving all of its previous states as well, which is why we have so many ribbon particles versus the relatively low amount of drop particles. And what that means is the longer your ribbon is, the more of those saved particles there will have to be in your system. So to reduce this, right now the spawn rate of 500 is really taxing my system and I'm seeing a lot of stuttering and lag. Um, so to reduce the burden of that and reduce this particle count hopefully, all we need to do is reduce the length of the ribbons. So right now, a one second long ribbon is staying on screen for quite a while, especially with that fast particle movement that we set up. So if I change that lifetime down to something like 0.1, then I still have a nice trail to my droplets, but uh, the, the system is running a lot smoother and I'm maxing out at about uh, 10,000 particles rather than the 90,000 that I was having earlier. Um, so this, our ribbon and our uh, original particle are now sort of on the same order of magnitude, which is what we really want out of the system. And if I compile that and look back, if anything, it now looks a bit nicer. Uh, so that's just a balance to keep in mind. Anyway, I'm going to move on from the trails right now and, gener and start getting the uh, collisions. So when the particles hit the ground, I want a little bit of a splash. The first thing that we need is a new emitter to handle what that splash looks like. So I will right click, add emitter, and this time I'm going to base my emitter off a directional burst. And the directional burst is just that. It's a burst of particles in a single direction. And the way that it has been set up is that there is this spawn burst instantaneous. So unlike the hanging particles, which are spawning all the time constantly, um, this instantaneous burst asks you how many particles you want to spawn, and then at what time you want to spawn them. However, that is not particularly useful to me because I don't want these particles spawning at a certain time, which is what this option does. I want them spawning at a certain event when the raindrops collide with the ground. So I'm going to delete the spawn burst instantaneous, but keep everything else for the moment. To connect this emitter to the raindrops hitting the ground, we need to do the same sort of system that we did with the trails in that we need to send out an event from the raindrops and then receive that event in the directional burst, which I'm going to rename as rain splash. So I've got the rain drops, the rain trails, and the rain splash. Let's go ahead and set up that collision event. Creating collisions is relatively trivial. All we need to do is under particle update, add a collision node, and the collision node needs to happen before solve forces and velocity. Now that we have a collision node, you might not be able to see it depending on how YouTube is uh, compressing the video, but it looks to me as though the particles are hitting the ground and then bouncing back up, which is not exactly 
the uh, the behavior that we want. Rain doesn't elastically bounce off the ground. So to change that, what I'm going to do is go into my collision settings and first of all, perhaps change the under bounce, change the restitution, um, which is how much the particle bounces to something like zero. And now the particles don't bounce anymore, but what they're doing is they're hitting the ground and then falling through again because the particles aren't actually dying on the collision. They're not, uh, the, the particles maintain their lifetime. So the way to get around that is further down, there is an option to age colliding particles, which I am going to check and then increase this aging rate, which is multiplied by delta time. So it's not exactly a zero to one relationship by some high number. So I don't know, a hundred. And that way, when the particles hit the ground, uh, they reach the end of their life cycle and then stop. So that's, that's the way to stop that uh, strange bouncing behavior. Now our particles are successfully colliding with the ground, but inherently that doesn't create an event. We have to explicitly say that when that collision happens, generate a new event, just like we generated the location event. So I'm going to click the green checkbox under particle update. And if I type generate, I'll get generate collision event. And the collision event will, when the particle collides with something, create a new event. Just like we handled the location events using an event handler, we can handle these collision events using a new event handler. So I'll go to the add event handler tab, press the green plus box um, and create a new event handler. We'll need to link it to that collision event. So under source, choose collision event and also change the execution mode to spawn particles because I don't want these events uh, sent to every particle in the system only to the particles that they are relevant to. And again, I will leave uh, max events and spawn number at zero on the sending side and handle the amount that is spawned on the receiving side. That looks all good from the sender's side. So let's move over to the rain splash and create a new event handler to handle those collision events uh, on the receiving side. Create event handler and then under event handler, um, create a new receiver. So if we type receive, there's three types of events and the one that we are receiving is collision. And again, the event handler needs to be connected to the collision event and we'll change the execution mode to spawn particles. And now the spawn number is where we'll say when we receive an event, how many of these directional burst particles do we spawn? So I'll add, let's say five to that just to see what happens. Okay, so we've set up the event handler to receive the collision events from the raindrops uh, and create five new particles per raindrop hitting the ground. So let's compile that and see what happens. So something strange was happening there. Uh, they, they, it seems as though the drops were firing, but then they weren't. And what's happening here is under the emitter state, the, it seems as though the default template of this uh, particle emitter uh, has a loop behavior set to once, which means that the, the emitter runs once and then doesn't run any more after that. So if we set that loop behavior to infinite and then compile, now we have some sort of strange looking drops appearing from the uh, raindrop collision locations. Mine probably look a little bit different to yours because my uh, particles under the splash particles, I changed the sprite mode. Um, so I think the default was non-uniform random. So I'm going to change the mode to uniform and set the uniform sprite size at perhaps 10. So compile that, see what happens. And now I'm having these delightful little splashes where the rain hits the ground. There is one other thing that's happening. Um, the, the raindrops are kind of curving when they hit the ground. Uh, and I think that's because there is a slight delay between when the collision event happens and when the particle is told to stop existing. Um, so I'm going to go to my collision module and change the restitution from zero, which is no bounce, so the particle sort of gets stuck where it is, to negative one which means that the particle is going to, for a moment, continue on its original trajectory. And that should 
hide the strange hook end to the raindrops that you might be seeing. And that is, for the most part, that. Uh, the system is all set up in place, which means that now the only thing that we need to do is tweak some of the values to get the rain looking exactly like we want it. For instance, my ribbons are currently a little too thick for my liking, so I'll go to the ribbon width, no, uh, the initialized ribbon, and under, let's just move this window around, and under ribbon width, change that to something perhaps three. Um, it'll sort of depend on the stylistic nature of your rain. And then again, I know we adjusted this earlier, but <laughs> the ribbon is still a little too bright for me. So let's move that way down. The other thing is that the lifetime, um, which I must have adjusted at some point, I'm going to turn that back down to 0.2 perhaps. So there's a little bit of streaking, but uh, it's not line after line after line. And then the raindrops, they're coming in a little bit bright too. Sorry, the splashes. So let's go to the uh, splash, initialize particle, and set that to be a little bit more faded, perhaps reduce the transparency, and maybe even pop a little bit of blueness into it. Because water's blue, right? The particles themselves are a little bit large, so also under initialize particle, I will change the size to perhaps five. There we go, that's a nice little faint, subtle splash. Um, and the rest of it is up to you. Just play around with these parameters, play around with the settings. Um, the, the velocity and cone, perhaps I would add the, increase the cone angle to something like 90, so that the splashes are a little bit wider. But I'm going to stop now and let you play around with the rest of the settings, because that is, for the most part, all I wanted to talk about today. So there we are. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too long. Let me know what you think of this new rushed through format. Uh, good luck with your rain systems and take care.